what's your take on this GMOs? See, GMOs, uh -huh. on the first, the first one, this is sometimes controversial, right? Mm. Um, technically, I, I'm a layman on that. Right, yes. Uh -huh. So, so okay, technically speaking, on the one hand, mm. everything we eat is genetically modified. Uh -huh. okay. Now, how did uh, 10,000 years ago, rice did not exist. The, the rice plant we grow today did not exist. What existed was something called a wild rice, which is like a bamboo plant. Right? So, all rices are also grasses. Right? Mm. So, it should be 10 feet tall. Human beings saw that 10 feet tall thing and they found that it's having these grains that when you boil, etc, etc, seems to give, you know, nourishment. Uh -huh. And then over thousands of years said, how can we make this plant shorter? Mm -hmm. And how can we make this produce more of those grains? Earlier, it used to produce one set of this thing on multiple branches. Mm -hmm. They said, can I artificially select for the one where it is putting all the grains on one branch. So, it's easy for me to harvest. So, human beings over thousands of years did artificial selection, right? Artificial selection means that I take the plant, I look at all variations in next generation and I only take the ones that have the features I want uh -huh. and I cross pollinate it and only grow that. That's how we got all our crops. crops. Right? Uh -huh. So, people somehow don't realize that that is genetic, genetic modification work. actually. Like the that. only difference is you're doing it over many generations. Uh -huh. But you are still doing it faster than nature will. Ah. You are, because you are interfering with nature. Right? Correct. People suddenly have a problem. If I do it, if farmer does it over 10 generations, that is natural. But if I do it in a lab and edit one gene and get the feature I want, that is considered GMO. Mm -hmm. right? So, this is, so therefore, there is a larger perception and understanding issue with GMO. But to be fair, the other side of the story is that since genetic modification in the lab is done by large companies who have also made modifications that are ethically dubious. Like for example, they have produced varieties of seeds that that plant will not produce next generation of seeds. So, the farmer has to keep buying the seed from the company. They call terminator seeds uh -huh. and so on. Right? So, there are many unethical business practices associated with GMO which have given GMO a bad name. Uh -huh. A multi-year study has shown that there is no health danger mm. from consuming GMO crops. Mm. But because of the all of these other ethical issues and so on, many countries can still continue to ask for a ban or uh, they say that you have to label it as GMO. All that is fine. I think individuals deserve to know that the labeling is always important. But in general, there is no evidence that GMO crops are uh, bad for you in any sense at all. And here's the interesting thing. We are on the precipice of climate change. Mm -hmm. Many parts of the world where we do agriculture, we will not be able to do agriculture unless we arrest climate change. And many plus, it has already gone to the point where, like coffee, for example, in many places, you won't be able to grow in 10, 15 years time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which means that somebody has to figure out a way to produce a GMO coffee that will grow, mm -hmm. right, in these places. Like, for example, now, Arabica coffee is what we are used to. Robusta coffee now is becoming more popular because it is less picky about climate. So, and it can grow in uh, lower altitudes. Otherwise, Arabica coffee grows only in higher altitudes, colder temperature, yet moist. So, those kind of conditions are going to be rarer and rarer. So, it is possible that 10 years down the line, without GMO, we won't be able to feed the planet. You will need to genetically modify many of these crops. Otherwise, you won't be able to feed the planet. So, I think people have to appreciate that. I'm not saying you have to eat GMO. You have the choice not to. But, I think using that activism to prevent research and prevent access to people who might other who can actually benefit from it, mm -hmm. right? I think is 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 really unfortunate. I, I hope that even in India that we are able to encourage more of that because I think agriculture is under a serious crisis. I think we need to encourage more innovation and more uh, ability to do that while preventing the capitalistic excesses of that kind of exploitation that we've come to associate with big food industries. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a thing. But otherwise, from a purely health standpoint, makes nothing no major. Yeah.